Now, if I was the type to complain, I would say I'm sick of this weather. What am I talking about? I am that type. I'm sick and tired of the weather. And by weather, I mean rain. Will it ever stop raining in the UK? And will I ever get to wear my new Air Force Ones? And will I ever stop moaning? Right now, the answer to all the above seems a firm no. Today's episode comes from Yorkshire's most welcoming golf club. And I got a reminder as to what the game of golf means to me and what this series is all about. I persuaded a golfer to travel three and a half thousand miles to fly from Toronto, Canada to play golf in the UK, where you could almost guarantee good weather in late April. And as with all guarantees, you really should read the small print. Founded in 1926, the major influence in the creation of the course was Yorkshire-born Dr. Alistair Mackenzie. The infamous designer of Augusta National, Dr. Mackenzie was a member of the first Green Committee and was nominated as Vice President from 1926 to 1930 of Sandmore Golf Club. The course meanders through a mature tree line, offers up wide enough fairways and large undulating greens. This is Mikey from Toronto. He makes pizzas and loves golf with a passion to learn and understand the history, architecture and evolution of this great game. He has stories to share and wants to hear yours. Playing golf seems to be about the journey and where it takes him both personally and geographically. He has a hunger to travel and discover every inch of the UK and Ireland's golfing landscape. So to be able to come to the UK, you know, write an email, yeah. introduce yourself, and they're like, yep, you're more than welcome to come along. And everybody's welcoming all these. They're so good. Thing? Yeah. And the amount of friends that I've made um, who are now like, yep, come on back, we'll get you on. Okay. Um, uh, we'll get you on different courses. Yeah, yeah. Play That's the cool. variety. Good to hear. So the plan was simple, play some golf, have a chat and then film a good old match play on the back nine. Which we did, but I later realised that this wasn't what either of us want from this game. Results and personal performance is secondary. They almost get in the way of enjoyment at times. So, Mike, you started telling me a tale about, uh, well, your relationship with your dad, really, and how you, uh, he got you into golf. Yeah, yeah. And, well, you were yeah. getting to a sort of part where you'd uh, you had a bit of a fallout at some point. Which... Yeah, he was, uh, he was quite a reserve man and really um, trying to crack him to, to laugh or smile was tough. But I always remembered... Uh, the closest I ever got with him was through the game of golf. So uh, he was living back in Jakarta and he would be like, are you up for a game? It's like, yeah, okay, get up at 3.30 in the morning. We're gonna go drive up to the course up in the mountain. Really? And I'm like, I'm up, I'm up, let's go. I use always like, I need a tee off at 6 a.m. I can't go after that. It's right. like, right. And it brought me joy every time I played because I was, being a kid, you're a little bit aloof. You're a little bit like scattered brain, like, I don't care. I just want to be out here. And it honestly, it, it took me a long time to realize that made my dad very happy, even though he may not have said it, right. but he was very, you know, content and, and, and pleased to see, oh, he's enjoying this game with yeah, me. Yeah. Okay. Um, but unfortunately my last ever round, I played with my father uh, it just ended up in a shouting match and that was when I was 18, 17, 18 and uh, never got to play with him again. Uh, so 
when he passed away in 2019. And so now every time I play, um, it's kind of like, look dad, look where I am. Yeah, yeah. You know? Are you more chilled now? 100%. I'm not a hothead. Mm. I accept things. Yeah, yeah. I have that moment of concentration when I address the ball. But once it's done, it's done. You have to kind of... And you know, having this kind of relationship with the people you meet and talk, it's relaxing, it's calming. I yeah. Mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it seems that, but it's, it's, not, it's, it's an hard place to get to though, isn't it, for a long mm -hmm. time. Yeah. I only like playing competitive golf. All I ever played was on a Saturday in a comp or a, or a league game on a, in the week. And if it wasn't that, I didn't really enjoy it. But then on a Saturday afternoon, if I didn't play well, it ruined the weekend. Yeah. So you do that for years and you think, hang on a minute. A so I'm the complete time. opposite to that now. Oh, I don't really care what I score. And... Listening to Mikey's story about his relationship with his father was far more interesting than a bogey or a birdie. And I soon realized my relationship with this game was far deeper than my handicap or my score. Thing I wanted to mention, you've got a really interesting bag setup. I've noticed, and uh, <laughs> quickly run us through what you've got in there. So you've got got some older older clubs. Is that a one iron? Got a one iron here. Oh, Skip the two. Got the three and four McGregor's. Yeah. Well, what then, sort of age are they? Do you think? These are well over 20 plus years. Okay. Um, and then I got the Hogan Apex yeah. Pros. These yeah. when I bought them from a gentleman last year. He had only hit them once in a sim back in 1999 when these came out. Okay. And somehow they feel better than modern clubs. Okay. Um, and I, because I love playing in golden age golf courses, yeah. I kind of want to play yeah. older ones. And then I have like just a more of a classic funny uh, $10 uh, three wit yeah. found in a garage. It's it's great. It's fun. Okay. It's just it's so yeah, I love pure. It. It's a great setup. Um, but yeah, I have that, and then my very first driver that I ever could afford as a young man. This was back in two thousand and four. Yeah. Yeah. So it's clear that you're obsessed with the golf in the UK, but there's one other obsession that I constantly see on your Instagram page, predominantly when you arrive. And do you want to tell everybody what that is? Um, I love Marks and Spencers. You do love Marks and Spencers. I just, I get emotional every time I go into really? the food hall. I'm like, this is great. Look at this, all neat and proper, all these microwave dinners. Well, when we get to the next tea, you kindly give me a, uh, a gift when we arrived. Yep, yep. We've got something for you. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> so as ever, it's picture of the week time. I've got to say, it wasn't great conditions for photography, but we did our best. keeping these uh, hidden under wraps because it's, it's like a, what? Oh my God. I've, I've not seen this before. Wow. Take your pick. Um, 
Uh, okay, you know what? This has some sort of like berry in there. Okay. I'm a, I'm a sucker for cream and, oh God, I've made an absolute disaster. Take the two. Okay, take we'll the take two. That. And then I'm going to declare if that's okay. Yeah. You all the life. It was so good. It was so good. And I felt like I'm, I'm really entrenched in British culture You certainly right now. are, yeah. This is it. More so than me by the sounds of it. Talking of British culture, I was staying in the nearby town of Harrogate, which is a classic English spa town with quaint streets, historic monuments and beautiful gardens, and a wonderful royal hall, where I started my walking tour. Obsessed with the decor and architecture of such a fine building, it was time to move on, and my next stop was the Royal Baths. And then it was on to Betty's Tea Room, where you can queue for a cuppa and some sarnie served in a very traditional tiered platter, commonly known as afternoon tea. We stayed in very good value accommodation in central Harrogate, named the Lawrence Apartments, and at a cost of £75 a night, I would highly recommend. So we tossed a coin for the honour and proceeded to play some indifferent golf shots. Neither of us broke any records on the day, but then again, neither of us cared. We spoke more, and I got to know more of Mikey's story, how he became obsessed with the dough-making process, and I'm referring to flour and water, not dollar bills. We swapped opinions on what are the great golf courses in the UK and what it is that makes them so special. Several missed puts later, our round at Stanmore was complete. In the years ahead, any recollection of our visit would not be about the number of strokes taken. Both good and bad shots would be wiped from the memory, but a friendship was built and that was thanks to golf. Thank you for this. This was a. It was a pleasure. It was the fun. golf was a struggle night, but uh, the company was good oh, and I uh, love it. a great we, walk. We battled our way around. A great walk. Well, I'm sure your dad's watching down and uh, yeah, he's happy. Yeah. Sometimes I make shots and I'm thinking I, I didn't do that. Don't, don't, don't look at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold on.